Star Wars, The Last Jedi. It was a movie that you either loved or that you hated, and today we're going to talk about my opinion on this movie. I mentioned to you guys on Twitter my initial thoughts of this movie, and I was a bit lukewarm at the beginning. So I went again and saw the movie a second time because everyone says you have to watch the movie a second time. And I got to say, the second time didn't make much of a difference for me. It's funny how divisive this movie has been. When you go check out the ratings for this video, the critics gave it a 92%, which is insanely high. But then when you go to the fans, it was a 54%. It really was very divisive. And today we're gonna to talk about why it may have been divisive. And I'm gonna explain what I liked about the movie, what I was a bit lukewarm about, and finally what I didn't like about the movie. And spoiler alert, there are going to be a lot of things that I don't like about the movie, and I'll explain why towards the end of the video. And speaking of spoiler alerts, yes, this will be riddled with spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, go ahead and I'll give you five seconds to get out of here. All right, so if you made it past that five second spoiler break, you guys are in for a ride because we have a lot to talk about. And check out my previous video. I talked about how The Last Jedi is going to have an impact on Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. So if you're curious to see that, make sure you check that video. But let's get right into it and talk about what Star Wars is all about. And this is kind of an important question because Star Wars, in case you don't know, it kind of follows the beat of society a little bit. And what I mean by that is that Star Wars is a franchise that really kind of has themes that is going on in the real world. For example, the original Star Wars movie had a lot of themes. The world was a completely different, different place in the 70s and the 80s when Star Wars originally came out. Back then, we had the whole theme of the Cold War. We had this tension in this planet where there could be nuclear annihilation any second of the day. And we kind of saw that theme in Star Wars with the Death Star and how there was this tension in the galaxy. And we saw the destruction of Alderaan kind of be a symbol of planet Earth under nuclear annihilation. The original Star Wars movies, as if you actually go to the History Channel, there's a whole spiel on this. I had to brush up on my original trilogy history because there was a lot of themes that Lucas put in those movies. Another theme that was in this movie was the whole Vietnam War. Vietnam War was a very pivotal time in the real world, and here in the movie, they kind of brush upon themes like that as well. And beyond that, there's also the theme of Palpatine. Now, Palpatine, apparently from Lucas's perspective, was supposed to be about Richard Nixon and how democracies go into dictatorships. And uh, in today's world, what Nixon did doesn't seem nearly as bad as the stuff that goes around in current politics around the world. But that was the theme back then. Palpatine was a, seemed like a friendly politician who ultimately threw over the Republic and created this dictatorship essentially and I guess Richard Nixon was kind of an inspiration for that as well and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because there are themes in today's society that weren't a theme back then and are very evident in this movie and this might be one of the first reasons why this movie was very divisive because the political motivations behind this movie were very obvious versus previous movies it was a bit more subtle on what was going on as we saw in this movie, there are kind of three big themes. We have social justice. As we know, social justice warriors, that's a very divisive topic. Economic inequality, which was a very big theme on the casino planet that we saw. And then lastly, we saw the whole realities of war thing. People profiting off war by selling weapons to the good guys and to the bad guys. And people kind of being harmed as a result. As we saw on the casino planet, we saw the kids that were kind of facing the harsh realities of war. And then there was also the theme that was kind of the big overarching plot here. It was about not losing hope when it looks like all hope is lost. As we saw, the resistance was about to be extinct. The whole movie was based on the premise that the Jedi were on the brink of extinction as well. As we saw, it looks like the Jedi aren't going extinct and it looks like the resistance will keep going on further in the next movie. So those are the big themes there. And I want to bring that up because that is one reason why Star Wars is such a popular movie is because it th draws upon those beats of society and today's beats in society are very divisive. Let's go now and talk about what I like the movie because there were quite a few things that I really did enjoy about the movie. So let's get into it. First of all, I really enjoyed the interaction between Rey and Kylo. I need someone to show me my place in all this. They have really developed as two characters in this movie. And the main issue I have is that the movie didn't nearly focus on them so much. And they were focusing on all this other frivolous stuff that really took away from Rey and Kylo Ren. Rey and Kylo Ren, they're in this predicament where they're each trying to 
pull and tug each other to their side. Kylo wants to bring Rey to the dark side, but at times, Kylo looks like he wants to go to the light side. And Rey's the same way. She wants to bring Kylo to the light side, but at times, Kylo and other um, inspirations or other factors in the world are trying to draw her to the dark side. So these are two teenagers, essentially, kind of like today. They're kind of torn between what they want to do, which is kind of uh, maybe a good symbolism as where the youth of today's generation is they're they're torn between various paths of life so i really enjoy the the mind linking between these two characters and they really are much more developed and i'm just disappointed that the movie took away from their moments next thing the appearance of yoda i'm glad i didn't see a spoiler about this but the appearance of yoda was very surprising and i was very surprised to see as well that yoda also agreed that it was time for the Jedi to end as Luke and Yoda were talking about and Yoda pulled the plug and destroyed the Jedi temple that Luke couldn't go and make himself do. I was very surprised about that and if it wasn't for Yoda I don't know if Luke would have gotten the motivation to finally go out there and be the person to help the resistance go on to the next day and to have a new tomorrow. Yoda was a very critical component. I like to see Yoda's character come into the movie and he had that cheery aspect. <laughs> It was just a great surprise to see him, and that was a scene I thoroughly enjoyed in the movie. Definitely one of the top few themes, or I should say scenes, I enjoyed from this movie today. Or last week, whenever I did see it. <laughs> now this scene was really cool. The moment between Kylo Ren and what we later found out to be a force image of Luke Skywalker was beautiful. It was so awesome. Everyone in the theater was like, dang, dang, Kylo got played in that scene, and man, I was really hoping for more out of that scene, like something a bit more involved, maybe some lightsaber battling, but because Luke was a force image, I'm assuming his lightsaber couldn't clash with Kylo, so that's probably why he had to avoid all the hits the whole time. But nonetheless, a very cool scene, and it shows how deluded and how arrogant and how clouded Kylo's mind was with anger that he totally butchered the whole entire First Order commands and the whole movement to finish the Resistance. They were this close to finishing the Resistance, but because of Kylo and his anger towards Luke Skywalker, it threw him off, and now we're going to get another movie because of that one big mistake that Kylo made. And then lastly, the thing that I did enjoy was how the movie ended. It ended on a nice note. If you didn't notice, I think the, this is what happened, but when Finn was trying to get a jacket out of a drawer for Rose, there was a, a brief moment where he saw what looked like Jedi textbooks in the drawer. I'm guessing that Rey probably got these textbooks before she left the planet where Luke was on uh, to probably start her own order, maybe of, of the Jedi. I'm not exactly sure what she's planning on starting with these textbooks. I'm assuming she does have these textbooks. And at the end, we saw what looks like to be a, a Force-sensitive child who was able to use the Force to pick up the broom show the little ring of the resistance and it kind of gives you a hope that there's gonna be a better tomorrow for the galaxy so that is something i think kind of uh, indicates what the next movie is going to be about and i'm really looking forward to that maybe kylo will finally start his knights of ren ray will start whatever she's doing the jedi order luke says she's not he's not the last jedi so i'm, I'm not sure what's going on here but nonetheless i liked the final moments of how the movie ended kind of gives you hope that the next movie might be better than this one fingers crossed we'll see but we're going to talk about the stuff that i feel rather lukewarm about luke lukewarm about and the first thing i'm rather lukewarm about is luke get it lukewarm luke okay bad joke let's keep going on here <laughs> all right luke i'm very torn about how i feel about his character so i don't hate his character but i didn't quite love it except towards the end where he finally uh, made a force image of himself to go up against Kylo Ren. Only that one time I enjoyed Luke, but the rest of the time, goodness, the second he threw that lightsaber from Rey, I just felt this thing in my stomach. It was like, oh, very anticlimactic, and I didn't quite appreciate what he did even after the second time. It's one of the things where I was like, please help the movie change from the last time I see it because I didn't like that. It was just a big build up to that moment from The Force Awakens, and. Pfft, it just crashed. He also seemed rather arrogant. He seemed like, oh, he was just, a, he was a complete jerk to Ray. And the reason why I'm not hating on Luke so much is because I kind of understand why he might be the way he is. First of all, he closed himself off from the forest as we saw in the movie. Ray couldn't find him. When, when she was kind of feeling the force and understanding the force for the first time, she saw everything. She saw the death, she saw the light. She also saw the darkness. But she didn't see the light, and that's where Luke was supposed to be. He closed himself off from the Force for however long, I'm guessing, from the fall of his Jedi Order that he tried to bring up again. And 
I mean, he kind of reverted back to his farm boy simple life of just kind of living day by day, uh, farming for fish, getting his milk with that very awkward scene that we saw. So I kind of understand where he's coming from. And plus, it's been, what, 40 years since we last saw Luke Skywalker? A lot changes with a person after 40 years. Your perspective on life changes. So I'm not going to completely say I hated Luke, but I just couldn't find myself to like him until the very end of the movie. Another thing I was lukewarm about, not a big issue, but how is Rey so powerful? I felt like she's powerful than most other Jedis out there, and she has pretty much zero training. And I'm just kind of wondering why she's so powerful, but I'm just going to assume she is the next biggest force prodigy out there since Anakin Skywalker, and she doesn't need no training. She's too good for that, so I'm just going to kind of let that slide, but it did kind of bother me a little bit that she seems way, way more powerful than a lot of trained Jedi out there. And here's a scene that I think will be really important going forward, but right now it's kind of in my lukewarm section because I can't tell right now if it's important for the next movie or if it just has a simple theme that they kind of wanted to touch upon or if it was just a complete waste of time. There was that scene where Rey decided to go into the pit that was kind of calling her in to give her the answer she was looking for and she, the main answer she was looking for were who were her parents. So there's this whole scene, it was kind of cool, the whole clicking thing, and there was that kind of repetition, there's like this loop going on, and then finally there was the moment she goes up to this mirror, it looks like she's going to see her parents, and it merges into one, and you just see herself. Now either this could be a, some sort of theme or symbol that the dark side deceives you, it could be a scene which could be a lot more important going forward where maybe she has no parents, and instead she was procreated through the force like Anakin Skywalker. Now, yes, I'm familiar. Kylo Ren did say that her parents were just a bunch of deadbeats, but I don't know if that is a fact or he was just trying to kind of pollute her mind so he can try to draw her to him. We don't know yet, but uh, I think this scene might be really important going forward. Hopefully that's the case. I might be thinking a little bit too much about it, but right now it's kind of in the middle because I can't tell if it's a material scene or if it was just a scene that kind of wasted her time in a way. And two more things. R2-D2, one of the most iconic droids, one of the most iconic characters. <laughs> In the whole Star Wars universe seemed like he was just a cameo appearance in this movie. I don't know, kind of bothered me. One of the most important characters that was around for the longest time just kind of seemed like he was just like this trash can in the corner that had a, a few glimpses. Kind of seems like one thing I've noticed in this movie, they're trying to push away the old iconic characters and make wave for a new one. Push away R2-D2, bring in BB-8. Push away Luke Skywalker, bring in Rey, which I'm fine of that one. Push away Admiral Akbar, which really bothered me. And then bring in Purple Hair Lady, which I don't even know what her name was. And I don't know, that was kind of a theme of letting go of the old and bringing in the new, which was a definite big theme in this movie, and it kind of bothered me a little bit. And the last lukewarm thing was the humor. Ugh, some of it was so cringy, I was dying on the inside. The most cringy thing, the cringy humor, I should say, was when Luke was farming whatever beast that was this thing that was just sitting down like this and Luke goes in there. Oh yeah. And oh, I don't know, it was just so cringy. And I, everyone that was with me, they were like, ugh. And who knows, I mean, they're trying to be funny. I get it, but sometimes the joke seemed a little too forced. Like when Luke was trying to teach Ray how to use the force, he was like, oh, you feel that? You feel that? That's the force right there. But sometimes you can tell when an actor is really forcing the humor and that felt very forced in my opinion. All right, and we're gonna try to rapid fire the things I didn't like about the movie. And this is gonna be a big list. And I checked it twice and I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> probably trying to do the naughty or nice thing okay so what was naughty or bad about this movie i should say these aren't naughty scenes at all goodness the first thing that really really is high up on my list and what i didn't like was that one scene with leia we all know that unfortunately carrie fisher the actress for princess leia passed away i believe uh last year last december sometime and um very unfortunate she did film all her parts of this movie and we know that they're probably gonna kill off Princess Leia going forward. So going into this movie and the trailer, the trailer was filled with a bunch of clickbait. Everything that happened in the, in the trailer was the complete opposite in the movie. And going into the movie, everyone we talked about saying that we're ready to see Princess Leia die. You see that moment, she's out in space, she looks peaceful, and then all of a sudden, she turns into Superwoman Leia, Mary Poppins Leia. There are gonna be so many memes out of this, and somehow she survives 
after being thrown out in space after her uh, after her uh, command deck or whatever it's called was blown up by some TIE fighters. It was just so bad. It was just so bad. It was so cringy. Everyone was like looking at each other. What was supposed to be probably a heartfelt moment was very cringy. I understand that Leia is somewhat force sensitive. She can feel things in the force like when Luke died, she felt that. When Han died, she felt that. And I'm guessing she got from space to the ship using force powers. But even if you're a Jedi or even someone with force powers, if you get thrown into space, the second you lose the second you lose all your oxygen, you're dead. You're essentially imploded. All the oxygen sucked out of you. So you should be dead. <laughs> Leia, uh, she was one of my favorite characters in the original trilogies, and this movie, I didn't really like her all that much. There's a lot of jokes going around calling her chain-smoking Leia, and I don't know, wasn't a big fan of Leia, and that scene was definitely one of the most cringiest scenes I've ever seen in a Star Wars movie, and that surpasses Jar Jar Binks, which is a really big thing to say. Next issue is General Hux. Now, this character had a complete change in personality, or purpose, I should say, from The Force Awakens to this movie. Hux is supposed to be the living embodiment of Hitler, complete annihilation, complete rule over the galaxy, and this, and in this movie, he seems like an utter moron. Right from the very beginning, uh, Hux's character was just a complete joke. Poe was able to tool with him, and maybe Hux is, maybe he's a young guy, maybe inexperienced, but he was being completely tooled by Poe. Uh, he was tossed around by Kylo Ren. Snoke was just throwing him across the floor. He was just, he was kind of, I don't know, he was just kind of the big punch, punching bag for the show. He had no respect. He was supposed to be, in my opinion, the replacement for Grand Moff Tarkin in terms of iconic roles, and he is nowhere near Grand Moff Tarkin's level. Grand Moff Tarkin was cunning, very smart, and at the same time, very respected. You know, never see Palpatine do that type of stuff. You never see Vader do that type of stuff, the Grand Moff Tarkin. And here, Hux's character just completely changed. And there was a glimpse of the old Hux, or the original Hux, I should say. When Kylo Ren was down, uh, you kind of see General Hux going for his pistol before the last second Kylo Ren kind of came conscious again. And you kind of saw that one moment where we're getting back to the original Hux. And I'm hoping in the next movie, he becomes important again, because in this movie, he was just kind of echoing commands Kylo Ren was giving right next to Kylo Ren. I don't know. Really upset with Hux. Uh, he could have been a much more important character, in my opinion. And right now, he just kind of seems like a big dummy. Oh, uh, third biggest issue I have here. Snoke! What happened here, man? He just died as if he was nothing, that no one cared about him. They did not build up his story at all. It was just, I'm Snoke. I'm in a bathrobe. I'm in a bathrobe. And I'm dead. I mean, if you go on YouTube, I'm looking around YouTube right now. There are movies or videos upon videos about who is Snoke. There's theories about it's Mace Windu. It's the kid that Anakin Skywalker killed. The kid that was like, Master Skywalker, what are we going to do now? Or whatever. And then there's a theory of Jar Jar Binks. There are so many theories. Or Emperor Palpatine. People thought it was Emperor Palpatine or something. And before we learned anything about Snoke, they killed him off like it was an absolute joke. And I understand that in the, the original trilogy, we didn't learn too much about Emperor Palpatine, but I felt like we had a lot more scenes to understand what Emperor Palpatine's power was like. And here we just kind of saw Snoke shock people a little bit here and there, kind of toyed around with Ray. But beyond that, we know nothing about him. Very anti uh, anticlimactic. And this is another moment where they should have cut out all the Finn and Rose stuff and built upon who Snoke was all about. I don't know. I feel like a missed opportunity. And the way he died, I'm not completely against that he couldn't sense that Kylo Ren was turning to the light side because Kylo Ren was not turning to the light side. So there was no, I guess, ex expectation or no, uh, he wasn't suspecting that Kylo would turn on him because he was kind of reading into Kylo's mind and Kylo killed him off, which is understandable. You don't want a boss that is co constantly digging into your mind, even because Snoke admitted that Rey and Kylo were being connected because of him. And do you want a boss that's kind of getting into your head all the time? No. How he died, not completely against it, but the timing of his death was horrible, and we learned nothing about him, and very anticlimactic. And all those people who made Snoke videos, you wasted your time, and I wasted my time watching all those videos. <laughs> Admiral Akbar, my man, one of the greatest characters in the original trilogy, one of the most beloved characters in the original trilogy, one of the most legendary admirals in the original trilogy, was killed off like he was nothing. He got blown up with Leia and all that. He got flown into space and died like Leia should have. And then they're like, oh, Admiral Akbar's dead. And end scene. <laughs> oh, gosh. There's so much wrong with this movie. 
this was a character that was super iconic and instead it felt like i'm not sure for political motivations or just because they just didn't think about it they replaced him with a purple haired lady i don't know i think you know because the purple haired lady i don't don't even remember her name after two times watching she was very uneventful she was very annoying didn't like her at all and she ended up being a really big hero she was one reason why the resistance is going to move on to tomorrow because she kamikaze her capital ship into Snoke's ship and um very it was very cool to see that but that was if you want to kill off admiral akbar fine go for it but for a character of his legendary status he should have been the one to stay in that ship and also go save the day and i just felt like this woman was a very bad leader she's sitting there watching all her friends get blown up and then after probably about like 50 of the ships get blown up she's like oh i'm gonna do something about it uh and then she also kept her crew in like darkness you know they want to know what's going on here and i don't understand why she couldn't tell her crew besides the fact that the directors just want us to be kind of on the edge and like oh what is she gonna do what is she gonna do but if you're gonna be a real leader and you're gonna do an, an escape plan you probably should inform your crew on what's going on because mutiny happened and so much stuff could have been avoided if she was just uh if she had some transparency with her crew but the main thing we saw throughout the whole movie was the first order trying to catch up with the resistance and i say that's completely an utter bs on how that went down you're telling me that one of the most powerful armies in the galaxy that has so much weaponry so many ships could not take out this one puny ship in front of them fine your capital ship might not be able to catch up with theirs but why in the heck can't you send a bunch of ships towards it send a boarding party towards the ship i mean heck poe and a couple of ships blew up the dreadnought which was this a humongous ship but nope the first order they can't take out this tiny capital ship that is on fumes right now I don't know, I think that whole main plot that we saw for the whole movie of this whole catch-up scene could have went totally different. I don't understand why they couldn't send a bunch of ships or a boarding party to get on the ship, hijack it, or just blow it to smithereens. Uh, poor command. It shows the. It shows that Hux is not a capable commander. It shows that Snoke wasn't a capable commander. Bad scene in my part. I feel like if you had Grand Moff Tarkin, Grand Admiral Thrawn leading that fleet, that, that the story should, would have came out a, totally different. All right, uh, let's, we're gonna try to speed this up a little bit, but Luke Skywalker's death, I don't know. I did not like it. I, I, I was very proud of him for doing the whole thing with Kylo Ren, kind of holding him back so the Resistance can get out of the way and find somewhere else to go to. I didn't like his death. It's like, did he die of a force stroke? Force, 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 force stroke? I understand he had to exert a lot of force energy to do what he did, but does that kind of indicate you should die as a result of it? His death seemed very underwhelming. I was hoping he would be in the next movie to train Rey and help her train, but instead he just died of a force stroke. He wasn't even that old. He looked like he was in good health. I was just disappointed with his death. Very anticlimactic yet again. Um, but at least he died with purpose. And the big thing as well, all these are kind of big things in my book, but the, the relationship between Finn and Rose seemed like a very forced romance. It's like if Finn did some sort of, I don't know, uh, giveaway to have a fan hang out with him, this would have been that girl. Rose, great actor, horrible character. I felt like she had really no purpose in there except to make a political statement on that casino planet. The Finn and Rose segments of the movie really have no big contribution to the plot besides the fact that the Codebreaker learned that the ships from the Resistance were trying to escape to the planet. That was the only main thing, but other than that, everything was completely irrelevant, it seemed like. I did not like the Finn and Rose dynamic. Could have been played a lot more differently. Rose could have been the Codebreaker to make her a more important character, but instead she just seemed like a fangirl that was just tagging along everywhere. I don't know. Wasn't really impressed with those two at all. And I just, it, it just, when they kissed at the end, it was like, ugh, that did not feel right. It didn't, they didn't seem like they had enough backstory to have that kissing moment where now they're madly in love with each other. Uh, I don't know. That was just, that was just me. Again, I'm just being an armchair critic here, but I think me and a lot of others were not impressed with what was going on there. And lastly, Poe's character seemed like he radically changed as well. Kind of like Hux, he went from a normal character, it seemed like, and in this movie, he seemed like a crazy psychopath throwing over the command. He was just blowing up ships left and right, sacrificing other people's lives for what seemed like was something that the, everyone else was not on board. He disobeyed orders from his uh, superiors. Um, not a big issue. I mean, Poe was still an okay character, but I felt like they really changed this character from a normal person to an extremist almost. Uh, but that was just my opinion on all that. But those were all the things I disliked. And as you can tell, I disliked a lot more things than the likes and i feel like a lot of these things could have been fixed with the removal of the finn and rose scene so you can 
build upon the whole uh, Snoke thing, the whole Kylo and Rey thing, maybe Rey and Luke Skywalker, so much more they could have built upon, but instead they wasted a good hour or whatever it was on the whole casino stuff and the Finn and Rose stuff. But that is my thoughts on the movie. Let me know what you guys think down below. Am I completely off? Do you agree with me? This is going to be a very debatable video. You either liked it or hate it. In terms of my rating, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. That's where I put it. Not my favorite Star Wars movie. My top three Star Wars movies are The Revenge of the Sith, Rogue One, and Empire Strikes Back. And yes, Revenge of the Sith is an awesome movie. I don't care what you guys say. But on that bombshell, guys, let me know down below what you guys thought of this movie. Leave me a like and subscribe so you're not missing a thing, guys. And as always,